calculating inflection points is not very difficult if you know how to calculate critical points. The calculation of inflection points is exactly the same as the calculation of critical points of the first derivative of a function. So it's quite easy. Maybe <laughs> you cannot follow me now, but I will show you in the following clip how it works. It's always the same. Inflection points, critical points, you always have to set the first derivation zero. And then you check the second derivation. When it does not equal zero, it's quite easy to tell what happens. When it does equal zero, you have to do some further analysis with the limit. And this is how it works. So it's not too complicated. I will show you how it works in the following clip. Hi guys, I'm going to show you how to calculate inflection points. It's actually not very difficult if you already know how to calculate critical points. We can uh, do a, a summary of how to calculate critical points. That is, if you have a function, then you need to calculate the first derivation, which is like this, and you, we, we say the necessary condition is first derivation is set zero, and the sufficient condition is the second derivation is not zero, but either greater or smaller than zero. If it is greater than zero, then we say it is a minimum. And if it is smaller than zero, then we say it's a maximum. So just keep this in mind, and then we use this keeping in mind to calculate inflection points. And how it actually works, calculating inflection points of a function is like calculating critical points of the first derivation of a function. So with this sentence, you're able to calculate inflection points just by knowing how to calculate the critical points. So, but what actually is an inflection point? So let's see, inflection point. If we have a function like this, it means, for example, the inflection point would be here. X axis is here. So, Inflection point means like be before this inflection point, we have a right hand bend. So just imagine you're driving on the function with your car and until here it's a right, a right hand bend and afterwards it's a left hand bend. So right hand bend, turning point or inflection point in this case, and then we have a left hand bend. That's what, what an inflection point actually is. Okay, so how to calculate? We said calculating an inflection point of a function is like calculating a critical point of the first derivation of a function, which means we have a function, we have a first derivation, we have a second derivation, and we also need the third derivation in this case. So now we assume our derivation is the function, first derivation, and then we say the second derivation is set zero, and the third derivation is not zero. So this would be the necessary condition, and this would be the sufficient condition. If we compare it to critical points, we see that it's quite similar, just that we have like not the first derivation set zero, but now the second derivation set to set zero. It, it used to be the second derivation is not zero, and now the third derivation is not zero. So it's quite the same. And okay, here specifically the third derivation tells us whether it's uh, before the point a right hand bend, afterwards a left hand bend, or the other way around. And we see if the third derivation is greater than zero, we have first a, a right hand bend, then a left hand bend, and if it is smaller than zero, then we have 
uh, left hand bend and afterwards a uh, right hand bend. So this is how it works. Actually not very difficult if you know already how to calculate the critical points of the function. And to show how it works, to demonstrate that it really works, we have an example. Example is function f. It is minus x to the power of 4 plus 6x power of 2. So before we can actually apply all this, what, what I just wrote down to keep in mind, we calculate the derivations. In this case, it's actually quite easy. And now we're done. Actually very easy in this case. So how to calculate the inflection points? Again, we said second derivation equals zero. So let's just start with the necessary condition to calculate it. And it works like this. Second derivation set zero. And then we see, okay, it's also actually not too difficult with this second derivation as, as I cal just calculated it. Then we say okay plus 12x to the power of 2. So we have then this equation. Then we divide by 12 and we have 1 equals x squared. Then we take the square root and then we have to pay a little bit of attention because then x would be plus and minus 1 and let's, let's just say x1 is plus 1, x2 is minus 1. So this is the result of the necessary condition. So now we just go ahead and calculate the sufficient condition which is check the third derivation. So that's what we're going to do. Third derivation of plus 1. Now that's what? Okay, plus 1, it's also not too difficult. It is minus 24. Minus 24 is smaller than 0. So, as we remember before, what did we say? If the value is smaller than 0, then we have before the inflection point, a left-hand band, afterwards a right-hand band. So in this case, we have left-hand band, afterwards a right-hand band. And the second, second point was actually, also we, we put it in the third duration, minus 1. And then we have positive 24, which is greater than, than 0. So we have the opposite, we have first a right hand band, no, right hand band, and then a left hand band. And it depends whether it's required or not. We can also calculate the points, which would be, in this case, we have two points. So we, we say deflection point one plus one, then we need to insert our value in the function. So we have 1 in the function that is minus 1 plus 6 is 5. If you're a little bit unsure with the insertion doing it in the, by calculating in your head, then you can just like write in some note. But in this case, it's not too difficult. So we have minus 1, minus 1 is squared, so in this case it is exactly the same result as plus 1, so also 5, right? Minus 1 plus 6 is 5, so, so we just calculated the two inflection points 
And that's how it works. So just keep in mind, you should be able to calculate critical points. And then just keep in mind what I just, what I said at the beginning. So this is how to calculate critical points. This is how to calculate inflection points. How to calculate inflection points. Inflection points are almost exactly the same way calculated like critical points. To calculate an inflection point of a function is the same as calculating a critical point of the first derivation of a function. So just keep this sentence in mind and then it's quite easy. It's always the same whether you're in high school or in college. It always works the same and with the inflection points you actually don't have to learn something new. You just have to remember how to calculate the critical points change it just a little bit, just one stroke more, and at each derivation, and then you, you got it. So it's very easy. Thanks for watching. Practice makes perfect further exercises with solutions you can find on my website, which is www.worksheets.com.